Hello. Thank you so much for attending today's session on fiber functionality. Any questions or comments can be shared with the CMI booth at the conclusion of this presentation. My name is Karen Setters, and I'm a registered dietitian, certified specialist in oncology nutrition, and director of nutrition with Metrician Inc. in the United States. I received my bachelor's and master's degree with nutrition and in dietetics from Indiana University of Pennsylvania, where I also completed my dietetic internship. I've been actively practicing clinical nutrition since 2007. In 2017, I joined the Medtrician team as the Director of Nutrition. I utilize my clinical experience and creativity to manage the marketing initiatives within the Medtrician product line. In addition to my role within the marketing team, I also act as the clinical liaison to ensure customers and clinicians alike are able to access the knowledge of an experienced dietitian who is also an expert in Medtrician product line. Please note my disclosure and states as well as the following. As a clinician in the United States, terminology and phrasing is geared towards that audience and may or may not be applicable for your specific market. Today, our goal is to review the prevalence of bowel challenges in the long-term care setting. We want to discuss some commonalities within these conditions and discuss some frequently encountered challenges. We want to emphasize the importance in understanding how fiber can impact stool consistency and regular output. From there, we will be reviewing the mechanism of action for Banatrol and high fiber and evaluate the functionality of both products in the long-term care setting. While bowel challenges occur in all care settings, we want to pay particular attention to the prevalence in long-term care. Bowel regulation can be difficult to manage due to the complexity of the origin. These challenges are not always quickly identified and may be multifactorial in nature. Appropriately managing bowels can further be further complicated by the challenges of polypharmacy. Polypharmacy is the concept of using multiple drugs simultaneously to treat a single ailment or condition. While it may be needed, adjustment can often result in a swing of symptoms from one side to another. Understanding the challenges involved and options available may assist us in better management of care overall. Both diarrhea and constipation come with their own difficulties within the care setting and beyond. Now let's review some of the clinical research for discussion in regards to these conditions in the long-term care setting. An observational study of a convenient sampling of residents in a 180-bed long-term care facility was obtained, and the evaluations of stool and medical records were done. Diarrhea in the long-term care setting um, residents were is significantly underdiagnosed. Diarrhea and the prevalence of C. diff in the in stools are associated with the test intestinal inflammation, obviously. Um, the study suggests that within the small number evaluated, they were, they were not able to identify a specific link. However, they were able to identify a correlation between weight loss and intestinal inflammation, but with just two samples, not C. diff colonization. The relationship highlights the importance of large studies to further examine the rate of diarrhea in the long-term care facility. Um, the effects of diarrhea and intestinal inflammation on weight loss and the interaction of C. diff colonization and weight loss, malnutrition, and functional decline overall. All are very important factors to be considered in an already at-risk setting. In an editorial review, uh, they looked at long-term diarrhea in the long-term care setting, and what they concluded was diarrhea and fecal incontinence are common in the nursing home. And diarrhea can increase expenses as it relates to nursing time, laundry expensive, overall cleanup, um, and diarrhea can be a particular problem in the frail older persons. In, an, in this editorial, they discussed actually a salmonella outbreak in Maryland nursing home where 72% of the residents and 24% of staff were infected. 24% of the infected residents actually died. Um, in many cases, chronic diarrhea and weight loss is present is a present feature, yet diarrhea is rarely considered in the nursing home as a major cause for weight loss. Chronic diarrhea can, lead, can also lead to fat-soluble vitamin deficiencies. This is particularly true for vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is very common in nursing home residents and results in decreased function and increased falls and even hip fractures. And diarrhea appears to be particularly common 
as we said, in the uh, frail and older adults. The concepts discussed here um, reflect the idea that the role of acute and chronic diarrhea in the nursing home contributes to dehydration micro and micronutrient deficiencies are under-recognized. And we really need to do a better job of both identifying patients that are at risk as well as providing appropriate intervention moving forward. In turn, we look at diarrhea as a challenge. Constipation can also be uh, a, a big barrier in long-term care. In contrast, constipation is more common in older adults and accounts for an increased physician office visits and hospitalization admissions. There is a lack of agreement on the definition of constipation regarding what patients perceive as constipation and what physicians traditionally see as constipation. And this will probably continue till the end of time. Constipation is usually multifactorial and when not managed properly can result in complications like reduced overall intake, impaction, and even bowel perforation in some severe cases. Laxatives used uh, laxative use increases with age, and at times, multiple agents are used to relieve symptoms of constipation, as we talked about earlier, the polypharmacy effect. This can be a challenge and can actually be a risky behavior because it can cause dependency if used long term. Currently, the most common use laxatives are stool softeners, but they actually lack some efficacy. Uh, some some from the review of the literature, osmotic laxatives are effective in older adults and, and fairly well tolerated when we're looking at constipation relief overall. Psyllium is also used uh, quite a bit and as a bulking laxative, it is also an effective treatment for constipation. We're well aware of the challenges with the polypharmacy approach to constipation management. Uh, what we can do is extrapolate from this review that there is a need for a large scale trial to examine an appropriate cost-effective approach to better manage constipation in the nursing home. So when we're looking at the functionalities of fiber, we know that fiber, um, the commonalities of this discussion have been the challenges of bowel regulation in the setting. A primal concept is that adequate fiber consumption to promote regularity and appropriate stool consistency. We know fiber is a non-digestible carbohydrate found in plant food. It is an important part of health, a healthy diet and plays many roles in the body. Fiber may help bowel regularity, lower blood cholesterol levels, and keep you fuller longer. The two main sources of, of fiber that are found are soluble and insoluble fiber. And conceptually, they seem simple. However, we continue to struggle. When we're looking at the high prevalence of constipation in the long-term care setting, it has been longstanding issue for caregivers, attendings, um, attending healthcare professionals, and the residents themselves. Traditional medical responses have been to utilize parmi uh, pharmaceutical laxatives, enemas, and suppositories for treatment. The purpose of this review was to determine if fiber supplementation, including fiber added to foods, is an effective in increasing stool frequency, improving stool consistency, and decreasing laxative use in long-term care residents. Currently, um, current evidence suggests that added fiber may be effective in increasing stool frequency and or decreasing laxative use in the long-term care residents and thus may lessen the burden of constipation. More research obviously needs to be done, but this was a, a very promising outcome. What we do find in regards to consumption from a fiber perspective is that we are still significantly missing the mark, even though we know the benefits of fiber. Um, targets fall way short. Women are recommended to consume about 25 grams of fiber per day, and men are recommended to consume about 38 grams per day. Health Canada statistics actually suggest that most Canadians are only consuming about half of that daily. Constipation and diarrhea are often a challenge to manage and sometimes are undertreated. Both can occur because of a variety of reasons, but origin is not always known upfront. So it can be an even greater challenge to manage it appropriately. When we're looking at diarrhea, we know it is um, categorized as the reversal of normal net absorptive status of water and electrolytes um, absorption to secretion. The augmented water content in the stool 
which would be like above normal, approximately 200 grams per day in, in a teenager and adult is due to an imbalance in the physiological uh, physiology of small and large intestinal processes involved in the absorption of ions, organic substrates, and thus water. From an acute diarrhea perspective, it's categorized as three or more loose stools per day for lasting less than 14 days. And when we're looking at chronic diarrhea, that's identified as episodes of loose stool lasting greater than 14 days. What are some of the causes of diarrhea? Medications in particular um, can be a, a big factor as it relates to diarrhea, whether that be liquid-based medications that may have sugar alcohols involved or antibiotics. Enteral formulas are a common occurrence, especially when we're looking at long-term care. There may be a physiological condition that is resulting in this diarrhea, whether it be an obstruction, maybe a bacterial imbalance, malabsorption. Oncology treatment, whether it's chemo, um, radiation, or um, medication can all have factors that result in diarrhea. We know that infection too plays a huge role, especially in the healthcare setting. Um, C. diff in particular is very challenging to manage and leaves us kind of lacking with um, interventions that are safe for these patients, especially early on in the identification. Typically, when we're looking at intervention, uh, loperamide is one of the first medications that is, is utilized for a, diarrhea, a diarrhea intervention. We also have heard about bulking agents and pre and probiotics. Remember, prebiotics are the fuel for the bacteria, they're fermentable fibers, and the probiotics are actually the live bacteria. So they're two different things. They can work together um, or be provided separately depending upon what the clinical recommendation may be. One of the biggest challenges when we're looking at diarrhea treatment or management is the constipation diarrhea conundrum. What happens here is diarrhea is treated with traditional anti-diarrheal medications. Fantastic. The diarrhea is resolved. We're working on management. Everything's going okay. But these medications actually stop or significantly slow gut motility, which causes either constipation or perceived constipation. That's then treated with a laxative because of the lack of excretion of the waste or stool. That then triggers an effect of more diarrhea, and the cycle just continues to repeat itself. There has to be a better way. The Banatrol is one of the factors that may be helpful when we're looking at appropriate management of loose stool and diarrhea. Uh, Banatrol is a natural remedy to treat diarrhea or manage diarrhea without medication. It's dehydrated banana flakes that contain a natural balance of pectin and potassium to help absorb the liquid in the stool without stopping gut motility. It also contains a galacto-oligosaccharide prebiotic or GOS, which is clinically supported to increase only the beneficial bacteria and decrease the amount of harmful bacteria in the GI system, restoring overall bacterial balance. This can easily be implemented to pretty much all, um, all care settings when we're looking at um, feeding, whether it be tube feeding or oral consumption. It can be added to liquids or soft foods depending upon what the preference of the resident is overall. So what is GOS or galacto-oligosaccharide? Uh, Galacto-oligosaccharide is a food source that is beneficial, provides beneficial bacteria that resides the, in the colon or the gut. The galacto-oligosaccharide actually ferments in our intestines and produces short-chain fatty acids, uh, specifically butyrate, which is the preferred source of fuel for bifidobacteria. Because this product is not destroyed um, in or, or digested in the stomach or small intestines, it reaches the colon intact where it can feed that healthy bacteria and really help restore bacterial balance in the GI system, which actually significantly helps with um, overall balance and may improve uh, colonization resistance, especially when we're looking at diarrhea and fighting um, GI infection here. 
Benadryl is proven effective to help manage diarrhea. It can be used with C. diff, um, especially when we're looking at early on when there really isn't another option to help manage that stool output and improve um, the overall impact of the condition. It can also be used safely for all, um, all forms of diarrhea and loose stool. It's really not habit forming. It doesn't cause dependency and it will not decrease the absorption of medications nor, de nor create hard stools or constipation. It, be it can be used prophylactically at the start of oncology treatment, um, at the start of antibiotic use or at the initiation of enteral feedings, if you, especially if you know that there's a poor um, likelihood for tolerance. Typically, we recommend three times a day until diarrhea resolves. You may need to titrate up or down depending upon what um, the overall severity of the diarrhea, and obviously clinical judgment does come into play with titration and um, patient-specific recommendations. In contrast, uh, constipation is also a very big barrier when we're looking at management of uh, bowels, especially in the long-term care setting. As we stated, it really goes underdiagnosed and it can be poorly managed at times. Um, a constipation is considered a condition in which there is difficulty in emptying the bowels. It's usually associated with uh, hardened feces. So when we're looking at causes, there really can be a variety of causes. It may be, like we said earlier, multifactorial. A lot of these um, conditions or causes can um, have significant effect on the bowels. Reduction in overall intake and dehydration are two of the main players when we're looking at reduced um, stool output and infrequency. Reduction in activity and mobility as well. When we're looking at long-term care, that really is, is something that um, has a big impact on how the bowels move and how frequently they move. A lack of overall fiber intake. We know that it's not just long-term care. Really, our society struggles with meeting their fiber needs on a daily basis. And then added medications, narcotics, NSAIDs, antihistamines, and antiemetics all can play a huge role when we're looking at constipation and the prevalence of it. And then finally, from an anatomical standpoint, there may be a challenge from um, anatomy, whether it be uh, post-surgical or um, some sort of functionality that may result in a overall lack of uh, stool regularity. Treatments can also be challenging when we're looking at management, especially in the long-term care setting. Laxatives are used very commonly as well as in, in conjunction with a stool softener. There may be uh, additional fiber products that are recommended to help with intervention and pre and probiotics may also be on board. This creates a big challenge because with a, a polypharmacy or multifactorial approach, it's very difficult to determine what's working and what's not working. Um, for that reason, we find it very, um, the mismanagement of, of this kind of simple condition can cause a lot of, of challenge within a, a nursing home uh, setting. The high fiber product is a clear liquid fiber that provides 12 grams of fiber per serving. It comes in a mild citrus flavor. It is a combination of polydextrose and FOS or fructooligosaccharide. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Polydextrose. Polydextrose is a low viscosity soluble fiber that's very compatible with liquid products. Due to its structure, it's slowly and only partially fermented in the colon. Given its slow rate of fermentation, it will provide short chain fatty acids throughout the length of the colon. Um, this is going to be uh, particularly important when we're looking at uh, bacterial health and bacterial balance. Polydextrose will be better tolerated and better for stool uh, a better stool bulking agent due to its slow and partial fermentation. In contrast, we also have the other active ingredient in the product, which is fructooligosaccharide, which is a soluble fiber that is rapidly and completely fermented. Uh, dietary FOS is not hydrolyzed by the small intestines and reaches the colon 
structurally unchanged. There, they are metabolized by the intestinal microflora to form short-chain fatty acids, another benefit to adding um, to the bacterial balance of our GI system. The lower molecular weight of the FOS has been shown to have greater bifidogenic effects than some other uh, prebiotics. This is important when we're looking at overall tolerance. Remember, these are fermentable fibers, so they, they can cause um, some uh, gas and GI distress. What we're looking for is a benefit to the GI system with minimal impact. And the fructooligosaccharide as well as the polydextrose both do that extremely well. So in closing, when we're looking at fiber functionality, it's important to understand that fiber plays many roles within the healthcare setting. Um, proper management of bowel challenges can have a significant benefit to the patient and the practitioner and the facility. All fibers are not created equal. We need to understand the condition to be able to um, appropriately manage to it. Uh, the fiber interventions are definitely key to help easily um, and successfully manage the conditions, whether it be constipation or diarrhea with very little impact, uh, very little negative impact, if any at all, to the, to the patient or resident. And understanding the roles of these fibers and the functionality can assist in meeting the goals and supporting the gastrointestinal health of these patients long-term without any dependencies. Thank you very much for your time today. Please don't forget to visit the CMI booth with any additional questions you may have.